against Andhra. <clears throat> My dear friends, yesterday we saw this uh, syllabus area. Syllabus is there that we have seen in AP history because AP history that is for 75 marks in Oval. My name is Balakrishna, senior history faculty in Oval. Okay, so I take history classes, Indian history at the same time, AP history, so then world history, all this, but world history that is not there for us. So here we have only this is for your mains we have only ap history andhra pradesh history so that only we have so in connection with that i told you so every day we are going to take uh, live classes and video classes they are also available i told you okay so video classes they are available so there's the uh, cost is only 14.99 rupees so here 15 tests you have to practice tests they are there five grand tests total t tests you can answer at the same time doubts clarification session so A to Z we are going to see. Anyhow, I will try my best to, okay, so you people to get uh, 70 marks. Out of 75, 70 above marks definitely you can uh, get in this. One of the topics today we have to discuss is advent of Europeans. Modern AP we have started. Okay, modern AP. Advent of Europeans to Andhra. So Europeans, you know well, the first people to come to India, first Europeans, what is the purpose of Europeans to coming to India? Basically, trade and commerce, you know well. Entrepreneurship, that is also one. And uh, so for their goods, they decided to search markets. That is one. Okay. So like that, with uh, having different opinions, so they started coming to different countries. So in the world, and like that only, they came to India also. In India, especially overseas, Andhra Pradesh. They came to Andhra Pradesh also, Machali Patnam that became the main center for them previously, right? So like that, advent of Europeans to Andhra, that is our topic. Okay, advent of Europeans to Andhra. So coming to this advent of Europeans to Andhra. Okay, so advent of Europeans to India, who were the first people to come to India? The Portuguese were the first people to come to India. Okay, second one, the Dutch. Third one, the British. Fourth one, Danish. Last one, French. But our topic is advent of Europeans to. So there is advent of Europeans to India. Andhra, advent of. Okay. Advent of Europeans to. Advent of Europeans to Andhra. Okay. Advent of Europeans to Andhra. That's our topic. Who are the first Europeans to come to Andhra? The first Europeans who came to Andhra were the Dutch. Okay. They were the people who came to Andhra. That you have to remember. Okay. So first people to come to first Europeans to come to India, the Portuguese. But first Europeans to come to Andhra, so that is the Dutch. Okay. So how these Europeans came that you see once. Okay. So first Europeans to come to. So there is Andhra. So first one, the Dutch. The Dutch, they were the people who came. Second one, the British, they came to Andhra. The British, they came to Andhra. After that, the French, they came to Andhra. The French were the people, they came to Andhra. And the last one, the Portuguese. Coming to India, Portuguese were the first people. But coming to Andhra, they were the last people to come to Andhra. Have you got idea? Who were the Europeans who came to Andhra in the sense uh, the names you have to remember? In which year did they come to Andhra? In which year did they come to Andhra? Suppose the Dutch, they came in the year 1605. So the British came in the year 1611. And the French in the year 1669. And the Portuguese in the year 1670. So like that only they people came to Andhra like that it was said. Okay, when did they come to Andhra means uh, these years you have to remember. Okay, so the put them in chronological order. Who came to Andhra? Who are the Europeans who came to Andhra? Put them in chronological order. If the question is asked, then you have to answer first one the Dutch, second one the British, third one French, fourth one the Portuguese. Okay, they were the Europeans who came. Like that, you have to remember all these uh, the points. Then we have to see the Dutch. First one who came to Andhra, the Dutch, that we have to see. Got idea? The Dutch belongs to Netherlands. Netherlands capital Amsterdam, the Dutch. 
So here first we have to see this, uh, the Dutch. Who were the Europeans? Who came to Andhra first? The Dutch. <coughs> the Dutch. They people belongs to Netherlands. Netherlands. They people belong to Netherlands. Netherlands capital, Amsterdam. The capital of this one is Amsterdam. Okay, Amsterdam. That became the capital of this one. Netherlands capital, Amsterdam. Then they established this Dutch East India Company. They established which one? Dutch East India Company. In the year 1602 only they established this one. But they came in the year. Came directly to Andhra only. They in Andhra in India. In which place did they enter? Which place they came in the sense here. So they came to Andhra first. Okay, in the year 1605. So they came to Dutch East India Company started in the year 1602. But they came to Andhra Machri Patnam in the year 1605. They came to Andhra. They came to Andhra Machli Patnam. They came to Andhra Machli Patnam. Machli Patnam. In which year? Machli Patnam in 1605. In which year? In the year 1605 only. So they came like that, it was said. During that time, during that time, so especially Golconda Sultans they were the rulers. Golconda Sultans belonged to Kutub Shahis, you know well. Bahamani Empire was disintegrated and five kingdoms came into force. One among them was one among them was Kutub Shahis of Golconda. So Bahamani Empire disintegrated. Birar, Bidar, Bizapur, Golconda, Ahmednagar like that. So five kingdoms came into force. Among them Golconda is also one. This Machli Patnam was under the control of Golconda Sultans. Golconda was administered by Kutub Shahis. They belong to Shias. So, in the Muslim community, they belong to Shias, not Sunnis. Suppose if you see Mughals, they belong to Sunnis. Aurangazeb, all these belong to Sunnis. But they people, Golconda Sultans, they were the rulers of this region. Golconda became the capital. So, and Golconda Sultans were the rulers that you have to remember. Who were the rulers? Golconda Sultans were the rulers. So, Golconda, Golconda. Kutub Shahis of Golconda, we can say. Simply we can say that Kutub Shahis of Golconda were the rulers. So here what happened? Kutub Shahis of Kutub Shahis. Kutub Shahis of Golconda were the rulers. So existed during that time. Kutub Shahis of Golconda. Who gave permission to this one? Muhammad Kuli Kutub Shah. Who gave permission? Muhammad Kuli Kutub Shah gave permission to these people for their trade and commerce in Andhra. Especially the Dutch. The Dutch belongs to the Netherlands. Netherlands capital Amsterdam. Dutch East India Company that was started in the year 1602. They came to Andhra, Machli Patnam in 1605. When they came to Andhra, Kutub Shahis of Golconda, they were the rulers. So in this Kutub Shahis of Golconda, who gave permission means, okay, so here, Muhammad Kuli Kutub Shah gave permission to the Dutch. Muhammad. This one is Muhammad Kuli Kutub Shah. Muhammad Kuli Kutub Shah. This Muhammad Kuli Kutub Shah gave permission. Gave permission to the. Gave permission to the Dutch. To the Dutch for their trade and commerce. Okay, to the Dutch. For their, for their trade and commerce. For their trade and commerce. That you have to remember. For their trade and commerce. Who gave permission means? Muhammad Kuli Kutub Shah. What is the period of this Muhammad Kuli Kutub Shah? Muhammad Kuli Kutub Shah's period, if you see. So this Muhammad Kuli Kutub Shah's period. His period was Muhammad, Muhammad Kuli. Kutub Shah, you know, well, this Muhammad Kuli Kutub Shah, because this is also one of our topics. So, this Kutub Shah is of Golconda is also one of our topics. You have to know the years, names, all these, you have to remember. So, this Muhammad Kuli Kutub Shah he was the ruler during that time. Got idea? Muhammad Kuli Kutub Shah he was the ruler. So, he came to power in the year 1580 and continued till. So, he came in which year? 
in the year 1580 only he came to power and continued till 1612 he was the ruler of golconda mohammad kuli qutub shah so he only gave permission who gave permission this mohammad kuli qutub shah only gave permission to these people so that's one of the important points you have to remember who gave permission mohammad kuli qutub shah gave permission to the dutch for their trade and commerce okay for their trade and commerce who gave permission mohammad kuli qutub shah he gave permission that is the important point then they established there in machli patnam originally what happened in the sense they moved to so they moved to indonesian region they went to indonesia from indonesia only they came okay directly they moved to indonesia from indonesian region only they came they came to this uh, especially machli patnam have you got idea so they came to machli patnam region mohammad kuli qutub shah gave permission so and first they established a center there in machli patnam first center first center was machli patnam in andhra they established there at machli patnam so there is a first area which was established by them machli patnam okay machli patnam there is a first center after that they moved to pulikot after that what happened they went and established there at pulikot they went to pulikot and established there at pulikot okay they established there at pulikot in andhra pulikot became the main center of the dutch in andhra what happened in the sense so dutch main center was pulikot which became the main center of the dutch so here pulikot became the main center of the dutch in andhra in andhra okay in andhra in andhra in andhra what happened pulikot became the pulikot became the pulikot became the main center pulikot became the main center like that it was said which became the main center pulikot became the main center in andhra naturally what happened in the sense they moved to different places in andhra so there is gollapalam narsapuram okay so bhimuni patnam all these centers they moved okay they moved to bhimuni patnam all these but uh, prior to that what happened so here trade and commerce advance they got uh, monopoly on diamond mines they got monopoly on diamond mines that is uh, one of the important points so in andhra during that time so diamonds were abundantly found they got monopoly on they got monopoly on monopoly on diamond mines diamond mines like that it was said on diamond mines they got monopoly that's one of the things at the same time textile industry also developed textiles also developed cloth industry we can say they purchased spices indigo jute etc all these were especially indigo that is also one mainly so this cotton cloth etc so and the main diamonds that is also spices diamond mines spices trade also so there is the spices also they concentrated on especially what in the sense the spices okay so there is the cloth industry so cloth industry that also developed by them cloth industry that also developed by them extracted raw materials they extracted so they extracted the raw materials like that okay all these things uh, they happened in the period of so this especially the dutch okay monopoly on diamond mines that is important spices cloth industry extracted raw materials all these things went on they moved to bhimuni patnam vishaka patnam bhimuni patnam they moved to which place in the sense they moved to vishaka patnam bhimuni patnam gollapalam okay narsapuram so all these centers also they established meanwhile what happened in the sense here so the british entered machli patnam in the year 1611 in 1611 what happened the british entered machli patnam the british entered machli patnam in the british entered machli patnam in okay here is important you have to remember the year the british entered entered machli patnam entered which one machli patnam the british entered machli patnam so in 1611 in which year in the year 1611 only the british entered this machli patnam british uh, originally sent uh, captain william hawkins to the court of jahangir you know well in the year 1608 yeah, 
In 1608, Jahangir did not accept. Okay, like that. So in Gujarat region, he did not accept to give permission to this uh, the British in 1608. Who visited the court of Jahangir? Captain William Hawkins, 1611 only. But here what happened? He did not give permission. Then in 1611, what happened? They came to Machli Patnam. The first ship which entered Machli Patnam was Globe. Okay. The first ship, the first British ship, the first British ship which entered, which entered, which entered Machli Patnam was Machli Patnam, which entered Machli Patnam was Globe, was Globe. You have to remember. Machli Patnam was the first British ship which entered Machli Patnam was Globe. Captain of the ship was Hippon. So, captain of the ship. Who was the captain? The captain of the a ship was Hippon. Okay. Who was the captain? Hippon was the captain of the ship like that it was said. The first British officer. So, who entered Machli Patnam was Francis Day. They used to call Masri Patnam as Masula. Okay. The first British officer who entered Masri Patnam was. Okay. Here, the British entered competition that was started between the Dutch and the British. That's why I'm telling. So, the first British officer, the first British officer, first British officer, first British officer who entered who entered Machli Patnam was, who entered this Machli Patnam, who entered Machli Patnam was Francis Day. You have to remember the name. Francis Day. Francis Day, he was the first British officer who entered this Machli Patnam. That you have to remember. Machli Patnam was called Masula. They used to call this Machli Patnam as Masula. Okay. Masri Patnam was called, how in the sense, they called this Masri Patnam as Masula. They called, they called Machli Patnam as, they called Machli Patnam. Okay, Masri Patnam as Masula. That you have to remember. How did they call in the sense, they used to call it as Masula. Masri Patnam was called Masula by them. And... Uh, so, seaport officer was called Shabandha. They used to call seaport officer was called. Seaport officer was called. How in the sense it was called Shabandha. Seaport officer was called. Seaport officer was called. Okay, officer was called Shabandha. Shabandha. What idea? Shabandha. So, like that the British entered. Now, the Dutch already they were there in Machri Patnam. At this moment, what happened? The British also entered Machri Patnam. Naturally, what happened? So, competition that was started between the British as well as the Dutch. Okay. So, these uh, previously what happened? First persons, first Europeans to come to Andhra, the Dutch. Already they established their centers in Machri Patnam. But what happened? After the entry of the British, the British goods were qualitative and quantitative during that time. They decided... Okay, people what happened started purchasing the goods of the British and they completely rejected or neglected the goods of so the Dutch. So then the Dutch gradually started getting losses. Okay, automatically what people will think in the sense if goods are qualitative and quantitative then only people will prefer. If goods are qualitative, goods are quantitative, definitely people will prefer. So but here what happened? So, these goods of the British, they are qualitative and quantitative. People started purchasing the goods of the British only, but not the goods of the Dutch. At this moment, what happened? The Dutch started getting glasses. Okay. The Dutch, what happened? Getting glasses. So, at this moment, in 1623, Dutch governor, in 1623, Dutch governor was Van Spelt. Okay. So, who was the Dutch governor? Dutch governor was Van Spelt, we can say. Later, this uh, Dutch moved to Bimri Patnam. The Dutch, the Dutch established centers at, established centers at, centers at Bhimini Patnam. 
భీమునిపట్నం విశాఖపట్నం భీముని పట్నం వీ కెన్ సే భూమిని పట్నం గొల్లపాలెం 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 నర్సాపురం ఎట్సెట్రా సెంటర్స్ నర్సాపురం ఎట్సెట్రా సెంటర్స్ ఫెరెస్ట్ ఆఫీస్ ఎట్సెట్రా సెంటర్స్ ఓకే సెంటర్స్ ఫెరెస్ట్ ఆఫీస్ మచిలీపట్నం పులికాట్ పులికాట్ బికేమ్ ద మెయిన్ సెంటర్ సో భీమినిపట్నం గొల్లపాలెం నర్సాపురం ఓకే so there is etc centers they established in andhra in andhra these are the centers especially which became the main center of the dutch in andhra pulikot became the main center but gradually what happened they started getting glasses why did they get class in the sense if competition is there automatically they will get okay if many tra- traders are there sometimes competition will arise in the same way between the british and the dutch competition arose at this moment what happened the british goods were purchased by the people but not the goods of the dutch then they realized that it is all because of the entry of the british that's why better to create some fear in the minds of the british wherever we go the british also coming and coming and establishing their center and british they are getting profits we are getting glasses like that they thought who thought the dutch Dutch governor once felt in 1623. Dutch governor. Who was the Dutch governor? Once felt. Dutch governor once felt. Okay. Dutch governor. Dutch governor. Okay. Dutch governor once felt. Once felt. Once felt. In 1623. In 1623. Asked. the dutch asked the dutch merchants dutch merchants dutch merchants to create fear in the minds of the british to create fear fear in the minds of the in the in the minds of the british british not to follow the dutch not to follow okay not to follow not to follow the dutch okay at this moment what happened the dutch governor once felt in 1623 year 1623 governor was once felt okay asked the dutch merchants to create fear in the minds of the british not to follow the dutch at this moment what happened in the sense at this moment okay the dutch they are at ambon islands they are at ambon islands comes in indonesia okay so the dutch at ambon islands they killed stabbed and killed 10 british merchants the dutch the dutch okay at ambon islands dutch merchants at the dutch merchants at okay the dutch what happened dutch merchants dutch merchants at ambon islands at now the island is ambon island sambon islands indonesia ambon islands comes where in the sense indonesia indonesia at ambon islands indonesia okay so that merchants at ambon islands indonesia killed killed 10 british merchants killed a home in the sense 10 british merchants and 9 japanese merchants killed 10 british merchants have you got idea killed 10 british merchants and 9 japanese merchants and 9 japanese japanese merchants okay why in the sense so if they come along with us uh, definitely competition will arise naturally people because british already advanced one so financially advanced one the goods which were manufactured by the british they are qualitative and quantitative so that's why they thought that they thought what in the sense it is better it is better to okay <clears throat> avoid the british like that they thought 10 british merchants and nine japanese merchants were what happened nine japanese merchants okay nine japanese merchants so they were uh, killed so with this rivalry that was started with this what happened in the sense rivalry hatred developed between 
so the british as well as the dutch so with this rivalry started with this rivalry started between with this with this rivalry with this rivalry started with this rivalry started between rivalry started between the dutch and the british the dutch and the and the british dutch and the british rivalry that was started it gave way for so then enmity enmity between these two it gave way for enmity we can say have you got idea whenever this especially then british merchants were killed there at ambon islands okay so there is uh, so at ambon islands the dutch merchants at ambon islands killed 10 british merchants okay that's the thing which happened and nine japanese merchants were also with this rivalry that was started between these two the british as well as the dutch at last it gave way for the battle of bedara okay in 1759 battle of bedara took place in which year in the year 1759 in 1759 okay this gave way for battle between the dutch and the british so the british versus the dutch this gave way for this gave way for battle way for battle between battle between battle between the british versus the dutch okay between whom the british versus the british versus the dutch the british versus the dutch okay battle between the british versus so battle of bedara that took place in the year 1759 battle of bedara took place in okay which battle took place means battle of bedara battle of bedara took place bedara battle of bedara took place in 1759 in which year in the year 1759 that you have to remember battle of bedara took place in 1759 with this what happened in battle of bedara the british got victory and the dutch were defeated in the battle of bedara in this battle in the battle of bedara the british what happened in the sense so in this battle in this in this battle of bedara battle of bedara okay in this battle of bedara 1759 okay the british got victory the british the british got victory the british what happened got victory like that it was who got victory the british got victory then the dutch were defeated who were defeated the dutch were defeated the dutch were defeated okay the dutch were defeated at this moment they felt insult they decided to leave india so at this moment what happened they felt insult completely okay so it is not uh, good to continue in india like that they thought so that's why what happened they decided to leave india so then what happened the dutch were defeated and started the leaving india so they left india they the dutch the dutch felt insult the dutch left india left india so in 1759 but all did not leave immediately 1759 but by 1799 but so what happened by 1799 but by 1799 they completely left india they completely completely left india have got idea so like that so here what happened the dutch they were the first people to come to andhra like that it was said so especially what happened gallapalam narsapuram bhimuni patnam etc they all became the centers so machli patnam that became one of the important one because uh, machli patnam that was called masula a seaport area that existed at the same time buying capacity that is important whenever or wherever the trade and commerce that is established buying capacity must be there 
people uh, should buy the goods. Then only they can sell goods and they can once again manufacture goods. Once again, they can uh, so invest money like that. It will continue. So, Masri Patnam, one of the important centers. So, that's where what happened. Masri Patnam advanced well during that time, right? So, like they see, oh, so they were the first Europeans who left India, who left India, who left Andhra. Okay, they were the Europeans who left Andhra because by 1759, Battle of Bedra that took place, you know well. So, Battle of Bedra that took place between, so between whom in the sense? Between these two only, the British versus the Dutch only. Prior to that, in 1759, this took place. 1757, Battle of Plassey. Battle of Plassey that took place in the year 1757. Okay, June 23rd only, this Battle of Plassey. In Battle of Plassey also, the British got victory that you know well. In the same way here, Battle of Bethera, the British got victory. So, the Dutch, they were completely defeated. What bits we can expect from this uh, Dutch? Who were the first Europeans to come to Andhra? Who gave permission to these people? Who gave permission to these people means Muhammad Kuli Kutub Shah. Who was Muhammad Kuli Kutub Shah? Muhammad Kuli Kutub Shah he was the Golconda Sultan. He was the Sultan of Golconda. He only established the Noeval. Bhagyanagar that was established by this one. Okay, Bhagyanagar that was established. At the same time, Charminar, Chandan Mahal, Dad Mahal, Kudad Mahal. Okay, Darushifa Hospital, Moti Mahal. All these are established by Muhammad Kuli Kutub Shah. Charminar, Chandan Mahal, Dad Mahal, Kudad Mahal. Moti Mahal, okay, Darushifa Hospital, many are established. In memory of Bhagyamati, he established Bhagyanagar, you know well. Okay, Bhagyanagar construction, that is 1591. So, was the architect of Bhagyanagar? Architect of Bhagyanagar, Mir Mamin Astrabadi. Who was the architect of, okay, who was the architect of Bhagyanagar? Architect of Architect of Bhagyanagar. Bhagyanagar. Architect of Bhagyanagar was Mir Mumin Astrabadi. Mir Mumin Astrabadi. Astrabadi. He was Persian architect. He was Persian. He was Persian engineer. And he was Persian architect, we can say. Architect. He was Persian architect. He only designed plan for Charminar also. He only designed for so plan was designed by this especially. So there is Mir Mamin Astrabad. He was Persian architect. Today Persia is called Iran. Today Persia is called Iran. Okay. You have to remember today. Today Persia is called not Persia. This is Persia. Today Persia is called, today Persia is called Iran, okay, Iran, have you got idea? So like that, so all these important points you have to remember in this, okay, have you got any doubts or anything to ask me in this? So if you have any doubts or anything to ask me, you can ask me, I will tell you, okay. So there is, so especially what happened in the sense, so there is Venkat, so the good morning. Okay, prepare well. So here it all depends on your preparation only. So there's uh, it all depends on what in the sense it all depends on your preparation. If preparation is good, automatically one can uh, so get job. So people naturally there will be an oscillation whether I am going to get this, not going to get this like that. Don't feel like that. This is a good opportunity for you. Okay. So if you avail this opportunity, you are going to get the things done. It's so, okay. So anyhow, so it all depends on your smart work as well as hard work that I told you, your industry, without your industry, industry indicates hard work, okay, without your efforts, it is not possible. Though you are very intelligent, you are super intelligent, but without going through the book, it is not possible to so understand and it is not possible to know, okay, that's why basically you have to know the things well. If you know well, so definitely you can answer well. So we can have discussion on every topic. And after completion of this one, I will uh, write questions also. How the questions are going to be asked or framed in this. Which is correct, which is wrong, mass of following like that. Each and every question I will explain. So be thorough with the subject. Okay, na? 
in the next class tomorrow also same time 7 o'clock or 7 uh, by 10 7 10 like that it will uh, commence okay so anyhow we can uh, continue this program okay so this uh, you can secure 70 above mass no doubt at all that i give you assurance okay so definitely you are going to get good marks in this but the thing is uh, your preparation is very very important without your preparation it is not possible okay so we people we give good uh, some, uh, the lecture but at the same time uh, so there is uh, uh, all the things not only we have this one uh, there's uh, topics practice bits grants each and everything we are going to provide but the thing is we have to go through well okay now so next uh, tomorrow by the same time 7 7 10 7 15 we can start and we can continue up to 8 so there is the next topic we can uh, see the second europeans to come to andhra that is very important in british okay the british very very important many important points are there in that so you can go through well okay now right thank you We can do MCQs also, nothing to worry. Okay, after completion of this advent of European Andhra, so I will give you MCQs also. Okay, we can discuss MCQs. So then definitely it is useful for you, no doubt at all. So I will try my best. Okay, so you people to secure 70 marks above. Right, thank you.